Hello and welcome to Get Yourself Optimized. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, and today it is my pleasure to have Echo Bodine with us. Echo is known internationally for her work as a spiritual healer and writer. She has appeared on numerous national television shows, including Sally Jesse Raphael and NBC's Later Today. She's the author of a number of books, including Hands That Heal, Echoes of the Soul, Relax, Little Book of Ghost Stories, and A Still Small Voice. She lives in Minnesota. Echo, it's so great to have you on the show. Thanks, Stefan. It's nice to be here. You just look I, like, honey, you look like such a sweet soul. Oh, this thank gonna, you. Yeah, this is going to be really fun. <laughs> it is yeah, I like be this. Fun. Okay. I've been looking forward to this, and I got nudged to invite you on the show from above. <laughs> so, Good, I like that. <laughs> yes. I just recently finished your book, A Still Small Voice, and I have recommended it to many people at least a dozen uh, friends of mine. Thank you. Uh, and I just, I loved it. I loved it. A still small voice, a psychic's guide to awakening intuition. Mm -hmm. And my intuition has awakened to such a degree. I, I don't, I, I just can't imagine not having it every minute of the day now. It I just, uh, over the last two years uh, or year and a half since I had my second spiritual awakening, having my intuition as that still small voice speaking into my consciousness, whispering into my consciousness mm -hmm. to contact people out of the blue or make a, a, a book recommendation or uh, tell them something out of the ordinary that just popped into my mind. I know this stuff is not random and I know it's not my subconscious. It's coming from the upper worlds and what a gift, what an incredible gift. And to know what to do with that gift and not just like dismiss it as, oh, that's just random synapses firing. Mm -hmm. How important is that? Wow. So I would love to start off by under uh, uh, like hearing your understanding of uh, the, the differences between intuition and mm -hmm. channeling. Okay. And the, the different types of receiving of guidance and information, because okay. sometimes you can be led astray. And I'm, I'm guessing you probably have some, uh, some wild stories of that happening in your past. But yeah, let's start there. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you know what? Let's talk about intuition as far as how it all got started for me and the difference between in intuition and psychic abilities because a lot of people a lot of psychics today call themselves intuitives i think it's because society accepts the word intuitive much better than it does the word psychics mm -hmm. and yet um it is i think it's misleading which it, it does bum me out a little bit that people are doing that i wish that real psychics would use the word psychic because what I want to do, Stefan, in this lifetime is change this whole vibe around the word psychic and turn it into a positive thing rather than a negative thing. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, the differences. You know, honey, when I was little, my mom, honest to God, she knew everything. She knew everything about all four of us kids. She always had a knowing about my dad. I mean, she had a knowing if our cat was sick. And you know, I would just watch her. And I remember asking her, mom, how do you know everything? And she said, well, honey, it's my intuition. I said, okay, what is that? And she pointed to my stomach and she said, it's in there. It's a voice in there, hmm. but it's a silent voice. It's like, what? There's a voice in my stomach. This is when I was seven. So I'm trying to figure it out. There's a voice in my stomach, but it's silent. What? Okay, so I struggled with it, but you know, honey, every time I had to make a decision, she would point to my stomach and she'd say, well, what does it say in there? Right? I don't know. Okay, so that's how it all started. Oh my God. But you know what, honey, after a while, I actually started to sense. It was like my stomach was having a thought and, and I heard the thought. And so I just started testing it out as a kid. And wow, oh, that was pretty good. And and then I had to learn the difference between my fears and intuition. You know, I mean, as a kid, as a teenager, God, I had so many emotions flying around all the time. So 
it took me a while to learn to discern the difference between, oh, yeah, that's something I really want to do. And my intuition saying, no, that's not a good idea. An example, honey, that I talk about in the book is uh, I remember asking my mom, my girlfriend, Debbie, asked me if I'd come over to her or come to her slumber party on Friday night. So I asked my mom and my mom said, well, what does your intuition say? <clears throat> well, I'm a kid and I want to go to the slumber party. So I said, oh, it says yes. And so My mom said, OK. And so off to the slumber party I went and I was there for about an hour honey and oh, I just wanted to be home and so I called my mom and I said would you come and get me and she said yes and she came and got me and she said echo your intuition would have told you no your intuition would have known that you would want to be home so that's why you have to start paying attention and again you know she's talking to me and it's just going right over my head honey because I couldn't figure out how my stomach would know if I wanted to go to the slumber party or not. So it took a long time for me to discern the difference between everything. And then when I was 17, we had an unusual experience in my family where uh, one of my brothers saw a spirit. And that led my mom to call a psychic. And the psychic said that we needed to see her for a reading and so mom and I went off to see the psychic and she told me that I was born with all four of the psychic abilities and with the gift of healing and she said a teacher will come along to teach you and it was about two or three weeks after that reading that my mom and I got a phone call from a woman out of the blue who said her name was Bertie Torgerson and that she was a spiritualist minister in Minneapolis and that her spirit guides gave her the names of eight people and she said you and your daughter Echo's name is on my list and she said I am supposed to teach you about your psychic abilities and mom came and told me about this and I was like what and I, you know, I was like, mom, this stuff is freaking me out. And she said, let's just go once and then we don't have to go back. So we did. The cool thing was the lady explained psychic abilities to me in such a way that it's like, well, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I get picture. I see pictures in my head that later come true, but doesn't everybody do that? Well, yeah, I get thoughts that come in my head that come true, but doesn't everybody do that? Well, yeah, I sense a lot of things about people, but doesn't everybody do that? Honey, I, I, I had had it my whole life, but I didn't, I, I just thought everybody did this and we just didn't talk about it. What was really cool was learning that psychic abilities almost, I mean, three out of the four of them are up here in our head and then intuition is down here. And then I learned that Okay, when I got a picture of something, I learned to go to my intuition and say, okay, is this something I should pay attention to? Yes. Oh, okay. How? What does it mean? And my intuition will help me, would help me discern what the pictures were saying in my head. Or when a thought came in came in out of nowhere a thought that I wasn't thinking about at all I would go to my intuition and say is this something I should pay attention to yes mm -hmm. oh okay or oftentimes it would say no and I had to learn the difference between my own voice the voice of spirit guides that were helping me and the voice of my intuition and so, honey, I'm telling, okay, I'm 74 now. This started when I was 17. It's been a long process, okay? I tell you, I teach a class on Thursday nights on how to live intuitively. And I, you know, sometimes I just think, Echo, what are you doing to these people? I mean, <laughs> I mean, intuition is the best way to live ever. But I think, you know, I mean, I watch my students struggle with well, is it in my head? Is that my intuition? How do I hear it? You know, honey, like, you know, you've, you've been through this. It takes time. It takes time to learn, first of all, learn 
when it's talking, but then secondly, the whole process of trusting it is even the bigger issue of mm -hmm. what do you mean I shouldn't go to work today? You wake up in the morning and your intuition says stay home and you go, stay home? That doesn't even make any sense. I have to go to work today. I've been planning this meeting for weeks. Stay home. What do you mean stay home? I'm not staying home. Okay, I think about all the people in 9-11 who woke up that morning and their intuition said, don't go to work today. And they said, you're crazy. Of course I'm going to work today. Don't go to work today. Well, I'm going to go to work anyway. And off to work they went. And how many people, as they're climbing down those stairs or trying to get out of the situation, thought, oh, my God, I knew I wasn't supposed to go to work today. Ugh, ugh, I always think of that because, as you and I both know, intuition is not based on logic or facts. It's It'll give you a guidance. And it doesn't tell you why. It never explains why. You know, if we knew why, if intuition said to all those folks, okay, now don't go to work today because there's going to be airplanes flying into the building. Oh, yeah, we would have really believed that. No. So, you know, intuition, as you know yourself, honey, it never tells us why. It just says, don't do this. Yes, do that. That's a good idea. One of my students last night was saying that she was in the grocery store and she said, and all of a sudden I get this feeling, green onions. And she said, and I thought, green onions? I don't need green onions. I've got green onions. And she said, so she was walking with her cart, green onions. She, she said to her intuition, I don't need green onions. I've got green onions. And then she, she thought, now, wait a minute. Echo told us not to argue with intuition. Okay, I'll just get some green onions. So she went and got the green onions. And she said when she got home, she went and looked in her vegetable drawer, and they were the ones she had were deader than her doornail. So, see, it's like that, you know. And another student talked about, yeah, I can't remember what her story was, but it was very similar, honey, of, well, do this. And she thought, I'm not going to do that. That doesn't make any sense. And then when she got home, it made perfect sense. That this makes total sense that if we're given the whole script to our movie or our play, the days that we're going to get in a car crash or whatever that is going to change our life ultimately for the better, mm -hmm. uh, because we uh, rise like a phoenix out of the ashes and become a better uh, soul because of it, we, mm -hmm. we wouldn't go out those days. So right, we have honey. to trust that we're being led by, um, you know, divine um, orchestration and not just winging it. And yeah. also, I think it's important to discern that we're, uh, where, where we're getting the messages from mm -hmm. in terms of uh, the intuition or, or the psychic receiving or yes. both so yes. that we don't get fooled. And yeah. that's where you, you, you connect to your gut, you connect to your heart. Yep. And uh, like your your heart center, this the um, that energy uh, center, and s see if that feels right. Like I got one bit of guidance uh, information that when I said it aloud to the person, it didn't feel right in my heart. It hurt. Okay. okay. Like, Wait a second. That's not. R this can't be true. This can't be true. And so I asked the follow up question: Are you of the light? And nothing, crickets. Oh, oh. <laughs> so I know. Oh, you almost got me there. So yeah. that uh, yeah. that that bit of information that I had relayed from supposedly above to my friend was incorrect information. So I made sure that he knew that that information oh, was was false. That's good, honey. That's yeah. good. You know, your ego could have gotten in the way and said, "There's no way I'm going to admit that I was wrong." That happens a lot to us humans. But it's so good when we come back and tell the truth and say, you know what? I misinterpreted that. I'm sorry. We'll have to talk about ego in, in, in just a minute. But I, I want to circle back to what you were saying about uh, one of your early teachers, Birdie, and how she just came out of the blue. Yes. With the information that 
she's supposed to teach you and, and your mother. Yep. So somehow she was given your names. Like, she's like oh, this is dictation, right? I'm, I'm yep. uh, writing down <laughs> what I'm receiving. And it's yep. this strange name, Echo. <laughs> oh, and, and I'm supposed to like find Echo in the phone book or whatever. All yeah. right, sure, yeah. I'll do that. I've had these kind of situations and I, I, I know it's from the light, so I'd, I don't question it. Uh, after I know that it's from the light, I just trust that there is a reason that's maybe beyond my view uh, point at that moment. So like, uh, here's an example. I got the middle, I got in the middle of my sleep one night, I got the name Lamar Phillips. Never heard that name before. It's a very strange name, but I remembered it and I woke up to write it down so that uh, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't slip away. Cause I know, okay, that's, <laughs> that's important. That, that wasn't just random synapses firing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the next morning I, I look up that name. It's a woman's name. And the oh. person who jumps off the page, uh, when I Google the results for that uh, or Google for that name is a copywriter, a marketer. And I have a marketing podcast as well as this one. So I ask him, I meant to interview her. And I got a yes. I'm like, okay, I'll interview her. Turns out, after I found out later, uh, doing an Akashic Records uh, reading with uh, Anne Marie Pizarro, that this woman, in a past life, was a a, um, a critic, an editor, or somebody who who was very critical of me, like really panned me in a Ooh. past life. Wow. And this was a way to kind of clear things. Cause I, I, I didn't, I don't hold any ill will for that. I don't even remember it. <laughs> it doesn't bother okay. me. I'm very forgiving. Yeah. So I just like, I, I did my best to make her look really good in that interview. And we spent a lot of time in, in editing my, my team to edit that, that podcast, make her sound really, really good. Yeah. I haven't heard from her since. Well, I, I, I wish her well, you know, I, I, think that that was a good thing. And then I find out later that this was a test to see if I listen and take direction from okay. above. Okay. So, so yeah, okay. pass that test. <laughs> That's really so, good. So I'm curious to hear like, how does uh, something like a name or a location or you know, something that clearly didn't just come from you, it came from above and you, you wouldn't have likely made it up like an unusual name or something like that. What sort of life-changing experiences have come out of that sort of receiving for you? You know, the thought as you were talking, honey, is I thought, okay, that was your spirit guides giving you that name, or it was your own soul bringing that name through to the conscious mind to say, hey, we have this person on our list that we want to finish up anything with it's it's so interesting like that because when our soul has somebody that they want to connect with there's something in there that needs healing of some kind the cool thing is that you followed up on it really honey because you could have thought what that name that means nothing to me and you could have just blown it off so I think it's really good that you wrote it down you paid attention to it you followed up and, you know, just like with so many things in our life, we have to face it, take care of it, and then be done with it. You know, that's it, you know? And our soul is so happy when we pay attention to things like that. So there's always a reason. And you know how a lot, of, like you, honey, you went and looked at the Akashic Records. Okay, a lot of people don't do that. They don't know why would I call this Lamar person and they blow it off. So that's really good that you paid attention. You said the important thing, which is, okay, so your head's up here. You've got this name, but you went down here. You went down to your heart and you said, okay, am I supposed to pay attention to this? And it said, yes. Okay. That was the missing piece for a lot of people. They don't take that step. So I think that's really good. I'm really glad you told that story. And I'm hoping that your listeners are listening. Because that's a very important part of the whole piece of living intuitively. I'll tell you, one, one of the transformational kind of uh, milestones in my 
awakening and uh, awakening of my psychic abilities was receiving, uh, an, again, an unusual name through automatic writing. Okay. I haven't done much automatic writing since, but that was really profound for me. It was a name I'd never heard before, and it just kind of wrote itself <laughs> in cursive. It was okay. my grandmother communicating to me through the automatic writing, and the name she wrote was Betty Binder. Betty Binder is a pretty well-known past life regressionist. She has some oh. books uh, from you know, decades ago now. She's, she's still on this side of the veil. And um, my question was of my grandmother, who, who do you recommend for uh, my wife, Orion, to use as a past life regressionist? Okay. Because she had a bad experience with past life regressionist here locally, and she doesn't want to go back. And yeah. uh, I thought, well, okay, let's find another option for her. The coolest thing happened. So I, I, I got this, uh, you know, scribbled in my in my uh, notebook, the name. It looked more like Linder than Binder, but it was a cursive L. So okay. it makes total sense that it's uh, Binder. But what okay. happened that blew my mind was I typed into Google past life regression, and then I started typing in the name Betty, and it showed under the autocomplete suggestions Binder. And I was thinking it would be Linder. Okay. Okay. Whoa, that blew my mind. I was just so over yes. the moon. That was last yes. year. And I wasn't used to getting stuff that would be so out there that you, you could verify. Like, that's a name that I'd never heard before, for sure. And it's a past life regressionist. And it was almost exactly the name that I had uh, written down. I was like, wow, that's this is really, really cool. Yeah. That just, I was. Uh, yeah. I was about ready to do cartwheels. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Wow. So what are yeah. some examples from your life where you've had these amazing moments of uh, e either uh, realization mm -hmm. or some sort of synchronicity or something that uh, it's just like, wow, I, 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 I got to pinch myself. This is so uh, over the moon amazing. You know, one that just popped into my mind. Gosh, I haven't thought about that one for a long time. Okay, so I was 24 years old. I had just joined Alcoholics Anonymous. I thought, okay, I got a brand new start at life. I'm not going to tell anybody in AA about my gifts. I, about my Well, back then, I didn't even really know if they were gifts yet. Okay, I still thought, do I want this stuff? Okay. So I thought, okay, this is great. I'm going to keep it a secret. Nobody will know this about me. They'll just think I'm just a regular person. They won't be nervous around me. They won't think I'm reading their thoughts. Everything is going to be good. I'm going to have brand new friends. Okay. So I went out to dinner with one of the women one night. We were we wanted to get to know each other. And we were in a restaurant. All of a sudden, oh, yeah, it was a cafeteria style. So we're, we're going down the line, and, you know, you tell them what you want. and there was this spirit standing behind the server and he said, you need to tell her three things. Looked around right away like, can anybody else see this? No, nobody else could see it. And I sent him a thought and I said, go away. And, um, and he said, no, you have to tell her three things. And I said, I'm going to tell anybody anything. Go away. And so then he disappeared and I thought, oh, phew, thank God. So I, Go, and I go over to the table, and he's sitting in one of the chairs. Now, this is a spirit, a male spirit. He's sitting in the table, at the table. So I sat down. I pretended like I didn't see him. Okay. And he keeps saying to me, you have to tell her three things. She was talking. I wasn't even paying attention to what she was saying. I was just thinking, God, tell her these three things. Then she's going to be freaked out. And then he would not leave. And then he got up and he went and he stood right behind her so that when I'm looking at her, all I can see is him. I looked down and I said, okay, I have to tell you something. And uh, she said, what? And, you know, oh. and I said, well, and I honestly, honey, I looked down. I said, well, I have psychic abilities and you have a spirit guide and he's here right now and he wants me to tell you three things. Well, of course, she was totally silent. And again, I couldn't even look at her. I just said, okay. And then he told me three things. 
and then he disappeared. So I looked up. She was just sitting, her, her mouth was open. She said, what was that? And I said, uh, I have, I have psychic abilities and sometimes these things happen. Please don't tell anybody about this. So then she started to cry and she said, Echo, this morning I had a conversation with God and she said, I don't know if I want to believe in you. I don't know if I do believe in you. So I'm going to ask you three questions. And let's see if you can answer these three questions. She tells me the three questions. And they were perfect answers to her three questions. And she just sat there. She said, I don't even know what to say. And I said, well, I guess God's just saying, you know, that you can believe in him. <laughs> and uh, after that, she pretty much kept her distance from me. <laughs> That was a nice thank you, right? <laughs> and then, honey, I had another situation. Okay, so again, I'm trying to keep this all a secret. One day, there was a knock at my door, and I opened the door, and there's this man from one of my AA groups. And I, you know, I'm, I'm young in the program. I, I don't know very many people. And he's standing there with his eyes closed, and he said, okay, so... I've had this horrible migraine all day and something told me to come and see you. Is there a reason why? And I thought, damn it. So I said, okay, listen, I was born with the gift of healing. It's God that channels the healing. But if you promise not to tell anybody, I'll get rid of your headache. And he said, yeah, okay. So he came in. I said, just lay down on my couch. And I went and got a couple hankies. And I, I always use hankies and I eat my hands. And so I channeled healing to him. And then I was on my way out when he first came. So I said, okay, so I channeled healing to him for about 10 minutes, honey. And then I said, and my hands cooled off. And I said, okay, listen, I have to get ready for a date. So I said, I'm going to go out and get ready. And then you can just lay here. And he lifted up the hanky and he said, how did you do that? My headache is gone. And I said, well, you know, it's God. And oh gosh, please don't tell anybody that this happened. And he said, uh, okay, I won't. Well, golly, guess what? I mean, he did tell people because he was so blown away. Honey, I, I did. I had those kind of experiences, especially that first year. And uh, it was just like God kept saying, you know, Bodine, this is what you're here for. So stop being afraid of it. And it turned out fine. But Again, you know, I was 24 years old. I didn't want people to know anything. I just wanted to be a normal person. And, uh, but I did have a lot of really amazing experiences. Another one that just popped into my mind. Okay, so a friend of mine, oh, this was another one of those deals. I was out on a date with a young man in the program and there we were double dating. The, there was this couple in the back seat, And so we're driving to the hockey game all of a sudden I get a vision of my hand on this woman's heart. And I I was sitting in the front seat and I said, not going to do this. No, no, no. <laughs> not going to do it. That's a hard and, path. <laughs> uh, oh, I, so we just kept driving and that's all I could see. I couldn't even see what was going on in front of me. The picture was getting so strong. So I swore at God silently and said, all right, I'll tell him. So I said to her, I said, you guys, um, you know, uh, stutter, stutter, nervous, nervous. And I said, um, I was born with the gift of healing. And I, I'm getting this image that I'm supposed to put my hand on on, on Jenny's heart. And, um, you know, we could, we could do this. I don't know. Everybody in the car. Total silence. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just kept looking forward like I hadn't said anything. And then she told me that she said, I can't believe that you said that because she said, I'm having chest pains tonight. And I've been really nervous about going to the hockey game. And she said, I've had heart trouble before. And uh, my date didn't say a word to me the whole night after the hockey game. Then I said, OK, well, why don't you? I said to the woman, why don't you come over to my apartment and I can channel healing to you. And uh, she so I did a channel healing and um, it was winter time. I remember that because then she put her coat on when she left and she said when she got back home, she opened up her coat and she said all this heat came pouring out from her chest 
And she said she didn't have any more pain. She was great. But she said her kids felt the heat when she took off her jacket. They could feel the heat coming from her chest, which was really cool. Okay, so as a result of that, several months later, this woman's stepson um, had an accident where he was riding a, his bike, motorbike, and he went over a cliff. He fell 18 feet and landed on his head, and he was in a coma. And so they flew him up to Minnesota University Hospital, and she called me and she said, would you come and do healing on him? And I said, uh, yeah, sure. I went to the hospital and right when I walked in the hospital, the nurse was saying to the family, chances of him ever coming out of this coma are so slim that he said, you might want to save yourselves time and money and put him in a nursing home now because he will never walk or talk on his own. He's had severe brain damage. You know, the poor family, they're just like, and I was, and I said to the mother, I'll be right back. I need to talk to God. I needed to get away from all that. And so I was walking down the hall of the hospital and I said quietly under my breath, God, did you hear what that nurse just said? And the voice within me said, are you going to listen to the fears of the world or are you going to get to work? And I said, well, I guess I'm going to get to work. And I went in the room, started channeling healing to him. And honey, that's when I started learning about the soul because the next day when I went up to the hospital, I walked into his room. So I'm channeling healing to him. And I hear a voice back here behind me say, please heal the speech part of my brain. I'd like to talk again. And I thought, who is that? There's nobody in here. I turned around and behind me was this, this soul, this spirit, this guy. And he, he had on, he appeared in blue jeans and a t-shirt. And I said to him, whoa, who are you? And he said, I'm the soul that lives in that body. And he said, uh, I really want to talk again. So please heal the speech part of my brain. And I said, uh, wow. Um, I said, so how, how come you can be out of your body? I didn't understand much about the soul at that point. And so he said, when I'm in my body, my body feels pain. When I'm out of my body, my body doesn't feel pain. So he said, so I'm trying to stay out as much as possible. Okay. And then again, matter of factly, he says, would you please heal the speech part of my brain? And I said to him, Dale, I don't know where that is. So here's the soul. And he goes right into the body. I watched right into the body and, and his hand comes up like this and goes like that. And I, I, I then the funny part was, the nurse came in right after that. It was a male nurse. And he said, why did you put his hand there? And I said, I didn't put his hand there. <laughs> and he said, Echo, he's in a coma. He couldn't have put it there. And I said, but he did. And, you know, I was, I was just so naive, but he did. And so the nurse just walked out of the room. He was like, whatever. And so honey, I started channeling. And then every day, when I would go there, I got to tell you the other part of this too, but when I would go there, I would say, hey, Dale, it's Echo, and whoop, he would come out of his body, or he would come back into the room, and then he would tell me every day, um, Echo, please work on the back of my knee. It really hurts today. Please work on my head. I've got a terrible headache. He would always tell me, every day he would tell me what he needed. It was absolutely the coolest thing and you know what honey six weeks later that young man walked out in the hospital all on his own walking and talking and going back to his life yeah it was really cool but you know what i have to tell you the other cool part of the whole story is that's when i was a barber and i did all my psychic work on the side and um so i worked downtown at a barber shop and the barber shop was getting renovated. And so the, our boss said, you guys are going to have to find another place to work for six weeks. 
And so we called all of us, what you do is you just call the barber school. And um, there was a barber who was on maternity leave over at the University of Minnesota. And that barber shop was one half a block from the hospital that Dale was in. So every day for six weeks, I would go down there on my lunch break and channel healing to him when nobody else was around. And, and then right when Dale was leaving the hospital, I went back downtown and worked at the new barbershop. So honey, it was like, it was all set up for me before the accident even happened. I ended up at a barbershop, a half a block from the hospital. It was just an amazing situation. Yeah. It's, I just did it again. I just talked your head off for 20 minutes. No, no, no. This is important <laughs> because what this shows is that this is a game rigged in our favor. A, a friend of mine was telling me how as a teenager, he almost drowned. And he was in a, a fast moving river and he couldn't uh, get out. So he had to just keep swimming in it. And after... <sighs> I don't know, 45 minutes or something. He just got so exhausted. He, he gave up at the very moment he gave up and he was starting to sink. There was a big boulder right underneath the surface that he was able to grab onto and, uh, and kind of get his strength back. And then he was able to swim to shore. And, oh, man. and what I told him, this was something that just came to me is that, you know, that boulder, was right there at the exact yes. moment you needed it. Kind of like if you've ever seen the Harry Potter movies, there's this room of requirement. It's exactly the thing that you need at exactly the right place at the exact right time. And I if you it. had needed it 15 feet earlier or later, it would have been there instead. That means that you would have had to go back in time to see that that boulder, you know, I don't know, millions of years ago or hundreds of years ago, whenever it showed up there, it would have to have been mm -hmm. placed exactly there. And mm -hmm. that's because this movie of our life is being edited in real time by, yeah. by our yeah. angels and guides and our yeah. creator. So if, if you just embrace this and realize that, Hey, I'm, I'm, uh, the, the, the deck the deck is stacked in my favor so I, I might as well just relax and let that happen rather than try oh. to control things then it just uh, I don't know it's like it's like on steroids honey that's a great way to put it when we can just let go and relax and see what the universe is providing for us as an answer as a solution as a whatever it's pretty cool it's just we get stuck in our head and we get fearful and then we shut off any kind of communication because of the fear. Well, what else cuts off the communication besides fear is just the, the, the dark sort of feelings, having lust or mm -hmm. having envy, keeping that purity of thought as well as word and deed really mm -hmm. opens a clear channel to the receiving mm -hmm. is what I've found. So I yeah. don't even look the direction of other uh, women uh, in in the environment. If I, I'm out mm -hmm. on a beach or I'm mm -hmm. at the gym or whatever, nope, avert the eyes, like protect the eyes. Okay. Because okay. I, I don't okay. want the cost of losing this connection. And it works. I it agree. really makes a difference. Yeah. One, one thing I'm finding, I want to hear your thoughts on this, is that as my abilities increase. I'm noticing also that my spiritual ego <laughs> is getting a little full of itself. It's like, wow, you're really, uh, you're kind of a big deal. You're kind of a big shot here, Stefan. <laughs> What's next? You know, like number one, New York Times bestseller in the self-help section, uh, you know, big audiences, right? Your own TV show. <laughs> yes. Yes. I got to be very careful about this because that also will interfere with my receiving abilities and it will interfere with my soul's path to uh, get closer and closer to the creator. I don't know if I'd call it the spiritual ego, but I would definitely call it the human yeah, ego. Yeah. Well, I'm referring to it as spiritual ego because in comparison to just regular ego where I felt so compelled to get these big brand names as clients so that I could 
uh, rattle them off okay. in uh, you know casual uh, introductions of you know me and my business like oh yeah I worked with you know Chanel and Sony and Zappos so that that was just regular ego now that I'm getting these psychic abilities and healing abilities I'm like I'm kind of a big deal in the spiritual world now. <laughs> so that's why I'm calling it spiritual <laughs> ego and I got to keep that really reined in that's dangerous that's really dangerous. It is, honey. It is. Oh, gosh. And there's so many people that live with that daily of, oh, God, just the the ego of I want to be the best right now. Okay. I have a brand new book that just came out in August, August 1st. I, I sit here and I think, okay, now do I just chill, ask the universe what I need to do to promote it or... Uh, should I hire, you know, a ten thousand uh, uh, dollar what agent that I can't afford uh, to get? Uh, you know, I gotta get in the newspaper. I gotta get in the magazines. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. Okay, and it drives me nuts when I go there, but I don't go there very often. But then, if I'm not going there, people will say to me, "Well, Echo, you know, you need to do more." And then I jump back to my ego. But again, honey, I've learned, oh, Bodine, let it go. Let it go. My brother and I have had a lot of publicity over the years for being Ghostbusters. And we have been, we've counted them. There's been about 13 or 14 production companies, either from L.A. or New York, that have approached us about doing a TV show. OK, and we always do these sizzles and oh boy, you know, and they're talking us up big time and none of them have ever taken place. No, there's always been an issue with one or the other. And like I've said to my brother, we're lucky because we're not in that world. We're not. You know, we've seen we've had friends that have become really famous and it hasn't been good for them. It's been a real blessing. And um, honey, I, okay, so I had been out in LA twice, interviewed for a TV show and got the part. And it was going to be like the show Big Brothers, except it was going to be a house of psychic wannabes. And I got the part of the house mother. So I was going to live with them. And oh my gosh, we planned for six months this TV show. NBC picked up the show. I mean, it was a big deal the morning of the day that I was going to find out if I got the job. I was in this beautiful bed and breakfast that they had put me in. I mean, and then the limo came and picked me up to take me to the studio. And, but, you know, honey, just before I remember I was standing at the door of this gorgeous bed and breakfast and I turned around and I looked at the room and I said, you know, God, help me remember today what my path is really about. I don't want to get caught up in all the fluff. Okay. And okay, went out, got in this gorgeous limo, went to the studio, found out, yes, you got the job. I remember he shook my hand and he said, he called me Bodine. He says, Bodine, I've interviewed over 200 psychics for this part and you are by far the best. You got the job, and he shook my hand. I went out to celebrate with two other producers from another show that I almost got. We're sitting in Hollywood. It was interesting because one of the women said, you know, I was going to go to this one restaurant, but I, I, I just have this feeling we should go to this other restaurant. So, okay, this restaurant had this huge picture window, and so the three of us are sitting in this... Uh, booth and we're all decked out to the max with our fancy clothes and fancy shoes and all of a sudden I, I had my back to the window and there was this big crash and I watched both of these women's their eyes went up like that and then came down and they both were just frozen and I said what and one of the producers had read my book Hands That Heals Heal and she stood up and she said, come on, Echo, you're going to heal this boy. And I said, what, what's, what's going on? And then I turned around and looked and I saw this kid laying in the street. He was on his motorcycle and he got hit by a car and he was out. 
black. And so, okay, we're in our high heels. We're running across the street. And this producer, she says to everybody, back up, everybody back up. She's a spiritual healer and she's going to channel healing to them. Everything was happening so fast. And so I just got down. I remember thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to rip my clothes. I'm going to rip my nylons. Oh, well, who cares? And I got down on the ground and I started channeling healing to them. And my hands were cooking. I mean, they were hot. And and I said to him, you know, honey, I, I never even saw his face. He had this huge helmet on. And I just said, honey, I, I have the gift of healing. I'm going to channel healing to you. Stefan, it was like the whole world just parted the sea. And it was me and this young boy. And I'm just in there channeling healing to him. And seemed like a second later, a policewoman walked up to me and said, ma'am, are you EMT? I looked up at her and I said, no, ma'am, uh, I'm a spiritual healer. And she looked at me. She said, okay, all right, you keep doing what you're doing. So she kept people away from me. There was this one guy, he was drunk and he kept screaming at me. Who the fuck do you think you are? Uh, you're, you're a witch. You can't do this, blah, blah, blah. So she kept them away from me. And then the ambulance got there and they said, okay, ma'am, we'll take it from here. I mean, everybody was so respectful. So then we got up. She and I were holding hands. We went across the street. We ordered dinner. And when I got back to the bed and breakfast that night, all I could think about was that young kid and how grateful I was that we happened to be at that restaurant at that time and nothing else mattered to me. And then I just started chuckling. And I said, God, you did it. You helped me remember what my priorities are. And I thought, you know what? I'd rather do this than that. And you know what, honey? NBC, three days before we started production, canceled the whole show. And it was after that that I thought, okay, I know what is important to me. And what isn't important to me. And then after that, even when Michael and I were pursued by other companies, nothing's ever happened. And I truly believe, honey, it was to keep me out of that world. Because, I mean, you get to stay in fancy places. You get to ride in limousines. You know, people treat you like you're the queen. And it's like, that's what not, that's not what my life is about. And that, that day was really an important day in my life. Not that I didn't know how important my career was, but it's like it helped set my priorities. So I understand that ego of, oh, my God, I get to be the house mother of a TV show on NBC. Oh, my God, I must be pretty cool. It was fine when they can't. I mean, we were all in shock that they canceled the show, including NBC, but they just didn't want to take a risk. And I'm even under contract. I'm not supposed to talk about it, but... That was, you know, like 15 years ago. So I think it's okay that I talk about it now. Did, did you ever find out what happened to that motorcyclist? No, honey. What's no. your intuition? Didn't know you anything about, about it. You know, the healing was so strong. Oh, that was the other thing. When the ambulance got there and they started cutting his clothes off, they said, oh, there's no blood anywhere. This is really weird. So I don't know, honey. I just know the healing that was coming out was so intense. And I mean, to the point where I thought, okay, am I going to? leave burn marks on this kid it because it was so intense mm. that's all that i heard them say was that they were shocked that there was no mm. blood so mm. i would guess that he turned out yeah. okay well what i'm i'm getting uh, about it is that he he recovered yeah i don't know his name i don't know his age i don't know anything yeah. and it wasn't important yeah yeah and that's another thing really too cool. is we may not know any identifying information about somebody that we want to send healing to uh, remotely or that yeah. um, we want to uh, pray for their soul's elevation or for their highest and best good. We don't need that information. Mm -hmm. We've got that person in our mind and God and our angels and our guides and you know, all our unseen support team know who we're referring to. So mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. we send That's that person light, blessings, unconditional love, that sort of stuff, it's going to get there. Yeah. You're right, honey. You're right. I'm curious. Did you ever solve any crimes? Oh, those were tough. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, yes. 
Oh, they're tough. They're tough. Um, yes, three different, oof, three different situations, and and after the last one, I told the police, said I I I can't do this anymore. I'm I'm not tough enough yeah. to see little girls hanging in a dumpster. I get no, yeah. I, I I can't do this. You know, like the police said to me in every case, they said all the clues that you got were there, but they still, there was never an address to go find that kidnapper. I mean, like they said, if you would, if you could give us step by step by step how to find them, but the steps were, I'd get a picture of this. Oh, but then now I get a picture of that. Oh, now I'm getting a picture of this. Honey, it, it was just like we couldn't put the whole pieces, all the pieces together. Yet afterwards, when they found the bodies or found the people, Oh, yeah, that clue, that clue. Oh, yeah, that clue. Oh, yeah, they took her there and there and there. So I just said, no more, no more. Yeah. It's too hard. I don't think it's good for your psyche to be immersed in, in, in that darkness and to mm -hmm. uh, focus your energy on problems. Instead, if you can focus on the light and on the, uh, on, on the good... Mm -hmm then it helps keep yeah. your uh, vibration higher. It, it, it'd be really hard well, for me was, to work in that kind of field and keep my vibration high. That would be really hard. Yeah, honey, it's hard. And also being a psychic or being a healer is very hard because, you know, happy people don't come to us. It's people that are in stress. They're going through really tough times. People that have just lost someone. You know, people go to a spiritual healer at the at the, the last resort. They don't. That's not the first thing on their list after the doctor gives them some bad note got diagnosis. And so usually when people come to us, at least this is the case with me, is they were <laughs> really really hurting and really needed some help. And a lot of times it was just they had gone too far before they came to get any kind of help. So. It's tough. It's not easy being in this profession. Oh, God, it sure isn't. But um, but it is what it is. This is what we chose. You had an unusual situation happen that you wrote about in uh, A Still Small Voice, and that is your husband at the time was interested in learning from a particular healer, uh, Shakti uh, going. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he went to her event. So you guys split and then he went to her event and then uh ended up marrying her. <laughs> yeah. That's that's yeah. kind of unusual. <laughs> it was very unusual, honey. You know, it's interesting that you even bring her up today cuz today if she was alive today was her birthday, September 30th. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was on my list of things to bring up <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah, that that whole thing, the timing, the timing of it was really significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, my darling husband married Shakti Gawain and uh they lived happily ever after for a long time. Shakti passed away a couple of years ago from MS, I think mm -hmm. it was. Yeah, she had a tough the last ten years of her life were rough. Yeah. But she's free now and that's the good yeah. news. Mm -hmm. And I'm still friends with my ex-husband. It's nice. So my understanding of uh, birthdays and death anniversaries is that you can light a candle on on those days and uh, pray for the person's uh, soul, for their, their elevation of their soul. And, oh, that's nice, yeah. honey. Yeah, that's nice. You know what? My, my, mom, my mom's birthday was July 23rd, and she died on October 4th. And so the first July after her death, July 23rd came, and I remember just hollering, hey, mom, today's your birthday. And she hollered back, no, my new birthday is October 4th. Interesting, and, huh? Uh, well, yeah, hello, I that's in like five days. <laughs> I know we're, we're, we're over time. I had like so many questions. I, I have like 30 more questions to ask. We'll have to have you back. <laughs> Is there something that you want to make sure we cover that I, I didn't ask you and it would really complete this interview? You know, I think the what I would leave people
people with is two thoughts about intuition is that intuition is not emotional. And so if you're feeling emotions in here, that is not your intuition. All right. People get uh, confused and uh, people will say, oh, my God, you know, I'm feeling all this anxiety. My my intuition is is freaking out. And it's like, no, your intuition doesn't freak out. Your intuition is calm. And so if you're feeling all this anxiety, ask the universe to please clear the anxiety so that you can hear what your intuition yeah. is saying. And the other thing is that your intuition will never lie to you or give you misinformation. And people need to know that too, that it is not emotional and it will never lie to them. It won't give them the whole story, but it won't lie to them. That's what I want to leave. Yes. With. Intuition yeah. is emotionally charge neutral. And to have anxiety, right. fear, right. dread, uh, excitement even, that only yeah. clouds your receiving ability for that intuition. And even when it's giving you bad information, and what I mean by that is a real quick story. When I was on my way to the doctor appointment one day, and I was driving the car, and my intuition, I said to my intuition, will you help me remember everything I wanted to talk to the doctor about? And it said, no. So I said, why? Accident. Accident? Accident. It just said the word. So I said, I'm going to have an accident? And it didn't say anything. So I said, okay, well, I'm not going to have an accident. And so I was watching every, every car except for the guy behind me that rear-ended me at 2 o'clock in the afternoon because he was drunk. But the point of the story is the word was calm. Even when it was what we would call a bad thing, it was calm. And then after that, then we're the ones that react. But intuition will not give you information in a ah scary or ah frantic yeah. way. It just says the word. And and uh, so right now I'm, I have a friend, uh, Susan, who is trying to locate uh, a, her dog. She, so she's got a lost dog, and she's turning to mm -hmm. to psychics, mediums, and so forth to uh, help her locate this dog. Because she has some abilities too, but I think it's because she's so emotionally tied into yeah. this situation. She yeah. uh, it, it's blocking her ability to receive. The information it's very difficult for us to get information like that when we are emotionally involved so that's why it's tough for psychics get to get information for yeah. themselves if our listener wants to pick up any of your books especially your your brand new one uh, that just uh, came out in august or if they yes. wanted to work with you or learn from you, where should they go? You know, honey, they can find out everything, I think, on my website, which is equabodine.com. It's really simple. I try to keep everything as simple as possible. Thank God for Zoom, because right now I'm able to do three classes a week on Zoom, which is really nice, instead of trying to find a place to do it all. Uh, they can. They'll, my new classes are listed on the website. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Well, okay, thank fine. you so much. And thank you, listener. Thank you for having the willing suspension of disbelief to be open to a conversation such as this and know that you're being protected, guided, and loved through every part of your life. And I'll catch you next week on the next episode. In the meantime, have a blessed week. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, signing off.